Do you look at the, okay, tell me, do you look at the camera? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I, I don't know what to say. We'll I'm going to wing it. Yes. <laughs>
process and I have a method and I feel like once you do a little bit of work with mindset because that's actually preliminary is you really need to change your thinking before you can move forward. Once you've got that mindset in place and then once you've got a method, it becomes a lot less overwhelming. Okay, perfect. So let's start tackling this. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I always start by completely emptying the space. Now I understand today we're not going to tackle the entire kitchen. Right. Okay, right. and um, for your readers who are doing like an entire kitchen, I strongly recommend emptying the entire space first because what that does, number one, is it forces you to touch and make a decision about every single item in those cupboards. Number two, then you've got like a completely blank slate that's got oh. possibilities and inspiration that maybe you don't see until it's empty. Right, so. right. Okay, so it's almost like it's hard to see that space as something else or what it could be until right. it's a blank space. Exactly. Okay. Like a move-in like a move in. Right. Right. And that's kind of, I think, the fun part of moving into a new space. Right. Is everything's blank. You can make it totally your right. own. But it's almost like when you finally have everything in there, that's it. That's the dedicated plan. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. There's no moving it because, oh my gosh, that'd be too much work. But exactly. you really do have to get to that blank slate in order to see the possibilities of what it could be. So yeah. let's start moving. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Okay. Because we have a little more it's than we thought here. It's getting a little here. overwhelming. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to go spread these in the living room and then we can move some of this out there so we have workspace. Okay. okay, sounds good. Sometimes I address the fantasy self that people have in their minds. And you might fantasize that you would use stevia to right. save calories. And it's funny because this is what I've struggled with with my food. Right is we always try to strive to eat better, right. eat healthier. Right. But what it comes down to, and I've mentioned before in my meal planning videos is, and I do this all the time, and it's very, very noticeable in what I have, healthy option oatmeal, but the kind I really like. <laughs> <laughs> and I've found that a lot of the time, I end up tossing expired food because I'm telling myself, I wish I wanted to eat this, so I buy it. But in reality, right, this is what I eat. Right. And so as I'm going through and meal planning, I've learned that to buy the things that I truly enjoy, even though it might not be, say, the healthiest option, you're gonna spend a lot more money buying the things you want and wish you ate mm -hmm. versus what you really eat. And so it's very, I mean, you see it, I have stevia, healthy option. Regular sugar, like this, what I really use in my coffee. So, and I've had this for a very long time. Same with my oatmeals. So, okay, so as much as you would like to use this, this is the point where I would say you haven't used, you've had it a very long time, right? right? So you can look at the past, I don't know, what, six months? Yep and say, I haven't used it in six months, why would I keep it for another six? I'm, I'm not gonna use it. That's true. Okay, can it go? It can go, <laughs> okay. it can go. <laughs> yes. And if you feel guilty about waste, we could, oh, it's opened. Uh, it is yeah. opened. Sorry. Yep. And here's it's... the thing too, and it goes a lot of the time, and this is a perfect example with your finances as well, with your budget. A lot of people, when they're creating their budget, they set limits for their categories based on I only want to spend right. this, not what I'm realistically spending. Right. Which is why a lot of the time budgets fail, is because we set those those crazy numbers for mm -hmm. ourselves, like our food budget. Mm -hmm. We cut it back to 300 bucks when in our real lives we're truly spending 600. Right. And so those are the things you have to make what you're doing realistic, and that right. applies to your budget, your finances, as well as what you spend your money on. 
perfect example. If you're going to try to save money on your food budget, mm -hmm. cut it back by $50 one month. Sure. Or one paycheck pay, pay, pay period if you're a paycheck budgeter. Right. Go from there. Small right. increments, small mm -hmm. challenges for yourself is going to get you where you want to go quicker than if you were to drastically cut and get to those numbers where right. you're out of your comfort level and you're constantly failing time and time again. So small increments right. and then go well, from and there. Well, I, I tell people too, in organizing, it's like peeling away the layers of an onion. You know, like this time, we might get rid of this much. It might just be the outer layer of the onion. But you might come back in three months and say, I'm ready to peel back another layer. I really kept too much. Right. And you just right. go in. It's kind of working steps. with that comfort zone too. Exactly. Getting comfortable and then being telling yourself, you know, I am really ready to, right. to peel back the other layer. Right. Let's tackle what I have left. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. In, in my life so far with my foods, I've always had a pantry category. Okay. I don't know if that's specific enough, but it's always like, especially like when on my grocery shopping list for my meal planning, mm -hmm. my meal planning printables, I have a pantry mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. And I look at that as like bees, my rice, my pastas, my canned foods. Okay. Are you separating that category into smaller categories? Okay, for me, my pantry is my duplicates and backstock. So I will... Okay, so you look at it right, like, differently. Like here, I think these are the same thing. Yes, they are. Okay, and they're both open. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, we could consolidate these, but the other thing I would do, this one would be unopened in my pantry, and this one would be oh. in my work and my space, my kitchen space. Oh, okay. Um, now, what do you tell readers who are like me who don't have a pantry? I tell them make one. Like you could designate one of your cupboards and you're oh, like, okay, to maybe make even a designated that, space. Yes, exactly. Okay. Maybe that kind of awkward, because you're not going to go to your pantry as often as you go to those daily spaces, right? Right. You're only going to go there when you run out of something and you need to replace it. So I would use maybe an awkward Like that cabinet. back area yeah, of that exactly. cupboard that I don't go to, right. I can't see or reach. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So. You make it work. Yeah. You make it work. So then you're saying like something like this would be pantry versus workspace. Right. The one that's open. Are they both closed? They're both open. <laughs> <laughs> You're and, not the only person. <laughs> and same with, so I did it correctly here. Okay. So I have an unopened have, okay. one and an opened one. So let's put unopened back stock like over here. Okay. For now. Okay. And those will be our pantry items. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And you know what, Miko? I don't do that with every single duplicate, like okay. these duplicates. You know, you go through these a little faster right. than you do hot sauce. So I might keep all three of these okay. in my kitchen space. But. Okay. Like, yeah, I do a snack. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then syrup, is that used for desserts or is that used for drinks? This one. Both. Both? Yes, what, I make, what would you say I make it I, mostly my son's drinks. Okay, He's, I'm going to put it in that. Fun. This is my, my attempt at saving money on chocolate milk. Rather than buying it at the store, oh, I buy the, and if I can get them at Costco in bulk, this is how I make his chocolate milks. Yeah, so that's smart. Okay, I always decant everything because oh. I have this thing against word clutter. I mean, people tease me for it, but it's real. I would much rather take everything out and have a pretty container for it than to have this word clutter. Okay. And so I take labels off of stuff. Oh. I, I take them out of their boxes, plus it saves space. Okay, perfect. As you yeah. use it up, yeah. you know? Yeah, okay, so let's do that. So this is going in the garbage. Okay. I got a couple different options here. Okay. You can put... Now, before we start... Yes. This is just cardboard. Yes, and I took this out of Walmart. I mean, I asked first, but, <laughs> but okay. like this is what they stocked their hinged removable oh. adhesive hooks in, but it's perfect. It's, and I liked it because it's not word cluttery, except for the front, which right. I might cover with a label or something like that. But we could put these in here, like this or this. Right, okay. I always- So this is a free option. Totally free. And would you say that thing, play, big box store companies like Costco, Walmart, Right. do they, is that an option to get free boxes? Yes, but I wouldn't go to big box because they have big boxes. And okay. a lot of times you want small box, so okay. I go to Dollar Tree, Walmart or maybe the grocery store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Winco actually has, at least our Winco has a grocery cart at the front that they put these in intentionally oh, really? for people to grab. Yeah. 
Oh, so okay. It's green, it's good for the environment, and it's cheap. Okay, it's free. It is free. free. Okay. Okay, and then if you want to spend money, you know, these you can buy okay. at the Dollar Tree. Okay. And you can stick those in here as well. And I, um, there we go. I always recommend filing things, storing them vertical whenever you can, because it just keeps it more visible. Okay. And so think of everything like a file cabinet. Vertical, vertical, vertical. Okay, and you got these at the Dollar Tree. You can get ones like this at the Dollar Tree. These are not, but yes. Okay. They have okay. very similar. Okay. So, okay. So, but we will do this a little bit later. So things like this. Right. Okay. Out of the package. Okay. Then you can also like combine, like if you have two boxes, you don't have to keep two boxes. You can combine them both in your little container and save yourself some space. Okay. Oh, more hot, more hot sauce. <laughs> he is serious he is, about this. He is serious about the hot, hot sauce. sauce. All, right. All right. Right, it's the Red Robin seasoning. Okay, so that's different. I, I'll give you a pass on that. But like these items that are seriously crushed red peppers, probably worth a penny. Right. So I would not be sacrificing my space or my mental energy or my, you know, sanity in just keeping these corralled. Yes. That's kind of the logic. I, you have to think of resources other than money sometimes, which most For people don't. For just your sanity. Yeah. Just your sanity in the space around right. you. And you can't get, you can get more money. You can't get more time. You can't right. really get more energy. So if this translates into more time and energy than money, then cut your losses. Yeah. Just Especially it when it's something small like this where it's a penny. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. You see, here's the thing too about living in a small space is we are Costco shoppers. Oh yeah. And it makes, because you truly can find better deals buying in bulk at Costco than say going yes. to Walmart. That's true. But it's really hard at the same time when you have limited space. Right. So it would be nice to have that designated back pantry for the overstock. Yes. Keep one unopened, keep one open that you're using. Yes, and that is why, let's see. Like, I don't know what, the Costco size, you know, like, I don't know what the Costco size of, say, okay, there you go, chia seeds. Yes, okay? yes. This is actually not that big, but if you had something like their peanuts, okay, come in a huge container, if you get something like this and decant it, you can fill this up, keep it in your, you know, kitcheny space, and then put the big container. In back stock. Yes, and then. Okay you can move about your kitcheny space a little bit better without these huge Costco sized things. Okay, perfect. Bettering up your perfect. way. Put it over there for now. Okay, are we empty? Well, We're it empty. depends. Did you, get, <laughs> did you get all the food out of here? Oh, you did. Me and my son, we like to bake cupcakes. Uh, obviously, it's, like, it's, it's fun. It's, it's one of our favorite things to do together because yeah. he can get involved with the decorating. Mm -hmm. and. I'm really excited. My son is super, super talented with art. He has great artistic abilities. He likes being creative. This is his way of bringing him in the kitchen yeah. and having him learn how to cook but still be creative and have it be fun. Yeah. But here's the that. problem. This is what happens. Right. This is what happens. So you just need a better storage method. And like for me, this, this you know, you've heard of Marie Kondo, mm -hmm. of course, and her whole sparking joy thing. Like... This sparks way more joy for me than most of what we've already dealt with. Right. So I think it would be fun if these were kind of showcased a little bit more. Healthy sugar versus normal sugar. Ugh. Okay. Okay, so see, here you have, here you have a full thing of flour, so this should go in your pantry. And then I have that open then one too. Oh, okay. Yes, you do. But we're going to put them both in your pantry because we already have, have some here. So this is going to go in your pantry. Yes. And there's more. Oh, and there's another one. <laughs> uh, you are going to love having your back stock in its own place, Kamiko, because then you can shop from your little mini store before you have to go to the grocery store and you're going to have automatically more space. Right. Right. So it's going to be a good thing. Okay. Do you... Do you need to put your brown sugar? I haven't bought any. Okay, need, so this I'm is, th we have not talked about this yet. I always tell people, keep a buy list as you are going through these because 
obviously you need to purchase this. Maybe we're gonna find we don't have an organizer that we need, we'll put that on the buy list and compile it. You could even put it in your phone. But compile it so that afterwards you don't forget. Okay. And you can go okay. to the store and get all those. So I things. have that's what this Oh perfect. My little notepad is, so I'll just put brown sugar on there. Yeah. I think that's all that we've discovered so far. Oh! You threw okay. I'm gonna recommend those are very, very old okay. and they were on top of the fridge. No, but yeah. I'm gonna salvage the container. Oh, okay. There because you go. if we remove these this is clear and it's durable. You the brownies, can wash it out and the brownies are durable too. Uh, yes, they're very old. <laughs> One of the things that they stuffed <laughs> on top of the fridge and mom did not see it. <laughs> you can almost always repurpose commercial packaging as a container. I mean, if it's kind of neutral and clear or white. Yeah, we utilize the top of the fridge and the cupboards because of limited space. Right. And well, I'm hoping, is this Chris? That's me. That's you. Okay. Yep. But drink cupboard? Yep. Okay. I'm hoping we can give you a really clear refrigerator at the end of this. Okay, so like for Chris's vitamins, I would recommend using one of these. These are locker bins. That's okay. what the Dollar Tree calls them. They're great for putting in a whole category of like items that okay. don't necessarily need and to be. And he can pull out the whole thing exactly. and have access to everything. He can pull down the whole thing, set it on the counter, get out all of his magical <laughs> supplements. Yes. And then put the whole thing back. Um, okay, so what these are are pie pans from the Dollar Tree. And in order to make a Lazy Susan, you just need two of those. Um, the other thing that you're gonna need is these glass marbles from the Dollar Tree. About five of those for this project. And then these, you can, these are from the Dollar Tree. These were like a necklace around Valentine's Day that was clearance, so it was like a quarter. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, anyways, so little tiny beads. Um, you don't want like large marbles. You want something pretty low profile to put in the bottom of your pan. So then, you just stick this one on the bottom and this one on the top. This allows you to spin that. Mm. And this is your Lazy Susan. So this is like, to, if you buy the marbles and the necklace, you're spending three and change. What do you think? Perfect. Can we put some of the bigger ones yeah. to the side? Yep. All right, so we've already categorized all of your food stock. Yep. We've put your breakfast items here, snack items here. This will be like your lunch prep. We've got your rices and pastas and other dried goods. Those two items are for drinks, condiments, bread items, produce, oils and vinegars, baking, and then your canned, canned goods. goods. And the last is my backstock. Your backstock. <laughs> to get another clear one we could for this and make them match okay perfect yay okay we can put back our lazy susans i think okay you don't want a pretty solution if it's not practical right 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 so if this looked pretty but it was really hard to get to them then it wouldn't be a good solution okay And really, I mean, that's why organizing takes some time is because you're not just making it look pretty you're not just paring down like you are thinking through is until this you're in, exactly am i going to use it exactly because it really the take the time to organize if you're not going to use it if it's not going to be functional then it's not worth the time right of doing it and you tell yourself i'm going to regain this time 
in functionality. Like right. I will move quicker. I won't look for things. Right, right. It's gonna be better. So, okay, so now <laughs> let's put vinegars on one side, oils on one side, and we'll call this cutter done. Okay. This is perfect. Right. This is right. good. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Let's see. I mean, this is massive. So, I bought this for my son at Costco, and I bought it, and my son said, Mom, I really don't like those. And I said, too bad. <laughs> look how many we have. <laughs> so, they have turned, so, they have turned into our travel go-to type yes. drinks. Yes. Because, as you know, if you have a six-year-old or a toddler, if they're really, really thirsty, they will drink anything you put in their hands. So, now we're going to decant these like we talked about. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we are going to take everything out of the packages. Okay. Okay. Even teas? Yep. Okay. Unless, unless they don't have their individual paper wraps. If okay. they're the kind that are just like the cloth or yes. whatever So, here's, that is. here's this, for example. One of my favorite tea drinks of all times. Um, you can get it up at Green Bluff here in Spokane, but it's a huckleberry chai tea. Mm. We do keep, it's a powder, which is kind of a weird thing you don't see in teas very often. I think we should have some. <laughs> right? It's amazing. It's amazing. As you can see, I spent eight ninety five on this, but it lasts me a long time because right. it doesn't take a lot of the powder to make, a, and tea is one of my favorite things to drink. So would you keep this in a packaging like this since it is pretty? I mean, if it's pretty? pretty to you, yes. If you wanted to, I would decant and slap a label on here. Okay. I mean, is it something you're going to buy regularly? I do. I buy it every season. Oh, see, then I would totally. Okay, yeah. I buy this every single season because it only comes out usually around beginning of summer. Mm -hmm. And I like to buy three or four bags to get me yeah. through winter. Well, and if you bought three or four bags, then you could probably put I could fill two that in up here. and keep some of my bags Exactly. Stock. Okay. Yep. I think this is going to be one of my favorite areas. Oh! <gasps> that one's open. <laughs> Okay. Well, oh, this one's open too, but at least it was right side up, so it didn't. Oh, because this one was upside thing. down. Because these are really filling, and I can only do about half of one. So <laughs> if I can only do about half one, I keep these in there, and it just. Oh, okay. Let me get uh, here. Let me get an. Uh, so let's just keep decanting. I I kind of rearranged here just a little bit. All right. Okay. So let's slap a label on there, and I'll bring it in from. I'm glad you buy mostly Stash and Tazo because those are the ones so that... pretty. Yes. When I'm going through my kitchen like this and I find like little things like this, I'll set a basket of use up items use on my this counter yeah. and be like, okay, I'm getting rid of those. All right. So, um, you're going to want to make sure that you label especially powders like this because in the kitchen in a few months, this could be anything. Right. <laughs> so we're, um, this is actually a paint pen from Michaels. It's okay. their Craft Smart, their Michaels brand. And you can get this for $4 and change, but use the 40% off coupon. Oh, there you go. Right. Always you. use that and save. Um, and this will write on glass or plastic or anything. And it doesn't wipe off until you are really intentional about it and use like some stainless steel wool and some elbow grease. Okay. So we're just going to put it in here. Kind of cute. Cursive chai mix tea tea. Okay, Perfect. chai tea, and then we'll stick that in your label or in your cabinet. Um, if you didn't want to invest in one of these, you have a couple of other options. This is from Dollar Tree. These are adhesive labels with removable inserts, and I love it whenever you can remove inserts, so you don't need to replace the whole label. You can oh, just nice. do the insert, right? So one option is the paint pen. Yes. From Michaels. Yes. So four dollars and some change, you get the forty dollar coupon. It's gonna be a lot less than that, and you can now remember if this was all the way full, obviously it would look yeah, like this. Yeah, it would show up here. But I mean, it's the same thing. I will probably end up going and getting more. Yeah. But you can label it with the pen. And once it's in a dark cabinet, actually, it shows up better. Right. Okay. Not in all this light. Okay. This is another Dollar Tree option, and if you have something that's porous or like a seagrass basket that you can't obviously stick a sticker on or write on. These are like little string tags. Okay. And so you can um, get these at the Dollar Tree and just tie them on. Um, again, if you want a no cost option, these are black tag board and a little piece of twine and a hole punch. And I will write on these like with a white 
pen so it looks like a little chalkboard label. Oh, there you go. Super cute. Now, where do you get the board? You can buy this at an office supply. I mean, it's just like poster board. Cut oh, up okay. into tiny pieces. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the options I did hear about is, you know, going to a paint supply store mm -hmm. and getting their paint color cards. They're oh. free. So they're free. You can custom color code your, your kitchen right. by, without spending any money on labels. So a lot of my readers have said they go down to the paint supply stores where you can get the free. the right, um, and exactly yeah, the color you want. And exactly the color you want. They're absolutely free to grab, and you can do essentially the same thing where you would hole punch, add mm -hmm. some twine. That's a free option as well. Super cute. I love that. Okay, that works. All right, so what we've done here is we've decanted all of your drink items. Yes. And as you can see here, um, this is all of the packaging that this came from. Right. And so we're going to save space by condensing. Okay. So let me go grab a container, and we'll do that. Oh. Okay, so traditionally these are used as drawer dividers, right? Okay. Did Tease you get these at Dollar Tree? Really? They're the same as the ones we put your meat spices in. Oh, wow. So Dollar Tree, they have a whole set that's kind of like modular. Okay. So you can get long, thin, you can get ones that have three different compartments that are a little bit larger, or you can do, oh, I took them back in there, but those ones with the smaller compartments as well. And then just play Tetris in your drawer and get it all. Perfect. Yay, that worked out well. Okay. Perfect. Oh, sorry. Oops. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do with Breakfast. all that? Okay, yeah, let's think about it really fast. We're going to pile these full of snacks, and we might even have room to store some things in the way back that we don't use often. Okay. I'm going to save this. Yeah, do it. Prettier. Yep. And you see how we filed those? Mm hmm vertically instead of horizontally. Now we can see everything that we have. And we do have some room in the back back. We could also put back stock snacks back there. Okay, yep, yep. That looks pretty. It does look pretty. All right. There. Perfect. Now Saved we should have, space. yes, a ton of space. Okay, so we'll make these so that they're easy to pull out. Okay, breakfast. Done? Done. So we have been working on this project for a little over three hours. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it definitely took a little longer, but when you're organizing, you're also decluttering. You're also going through and getting things thrown away that you're no longer going to use. It's a lot more, it's a bigger process, I realize, than just organizing. And so I'm going to have Wendy kind of tell you, as you can see, it's functioning better, definitely, than what I had before. So I'm going to let Wendy kind of talk to you about some of the things that we did and some of the highlights and things that you can utilize and bring into your own home. So we started down here in this cabinet and we have assigned these cat litter boxes the job of being like pull out drawers. And the top one here is for adult snacks and the bottom one, which is a little less accessible for Chris and um, Miko is for James's snacks that he can help himself to. Um, then we have worked here in her spice cabinet. We've put Lazy Susans in with Dollar Tree items. These again just cost us slightly over three dollars each um, and used a shelf riser in order to maximize our vertical space. We've organized spices, cooking oils and vinegars and then on the top we've got a few bins of meat seasonings and we've corralled those because they're hard to reach especially what's in back so she can just simply pull those entirely out when she needs to use them. This cabinet we've assigned kind of as a breakfast cabinet She's got a bin of cereals, a bin of oatmeal, and then her pancake mixes and syrups and oatmeal. Uh, in this cabinet, we've kind of done her canned goods and her dried goods, as well as her beverages. And we took her coffee maker, which was on this side, and we've moved it over here so that when they're doing their smoothies or their coffees or their teas, they can just function in this zone 
um, and not have to be moving all over the kitchen. We've also cleared off a little bit of counter clutter just to give it a more streamlined look and make it easier to clean. And I think this space is gonna work really nicely. Another thing I wanted to mention though, before we go. So we, because it's, I mean, take a break guys, okay? If this is taking <laughs> you like a super long time, which it might be a process. If this is the first time that you're doing this, it might be a process. Take a break, come back to it. Because Wendy told me that when you work on something for so long, then you get exhausted, you get frustrated, and you start making poor decisions rather than coming at it with a clear head. But we didn't get to my baking cabinet, you know, all of James's cupcake stuff, that type of thing. But we did put together a place for all of my cupcake uh, liners. So utilizing a mason jar like this, super cute way, you can see all the fun designs. The baking stuff is one that I'm gonna have to tackle on my own <laughs> using everything that I've learned here today. And it's definitely something that I wanna tackle. Baking is really important to me. It's something that I definitely wanna start doing now that I'm not working at my full-time job. So I wanted to show you this very quickly. This is how, and we got all of them in there. <laughs> so it's a great, great thing to do. All right. So I hope you have enjoyed this crazy long journey with us <laughs> with hopefully what I want you to take from this video is learning to repurpose, seeing things in a different way and not feeling like you have to go out and spend a bunch of money to make your space look nice and cute. I don't want you getting into that down real spiral of feeling like you have to go out and buy this and this and this and this to organize and make your space look cute. Because obviously, as you can see, Dollar Tree is a great resource. It's a matter of going in there and seeing what you can find. Even another thing, take a picture of your space. Take that picture with you down to the Dollar Tree so you can keep in mind what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, Wendy, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, I think just emphasize the fact that it's a trial and error process. Consider yourself and your own habits and your own, you know, love degree of meticulousness and create a system that works for you. It's not a one size fits all. Perfect. If you found